coming up on today's program, I'm going to tell you the number one reason why index ETFs are supreme and why they should be the foundation of your investment portfolio. I've got numbers from a 17-year study to prove my case. The court is in session. All rise and pay attention. Stay with us. I'm Ron DeLegge. Welcome to all. If you're here for the first time, hit that subscribe button. Post your comments below. You know I love to hear from you. Be sure to check out my other one-of-the-kind programs on this channel like ETF Battles and the Portfolio Report Card. So today we're going to take a look at some charts from S&P Dow Jones. They published this semi-annual report called the SPIVA that examines the performance of actively managed funds versus their index peers. And the data you're about to see will prove for once and for all the number one reason why index ETFs must absolutely be the foundation or the core of your investment portfolio. Now, I like this S&P study that you're about to see because all these stock picking fund managers and the financial advisors that sell their products, they all lecture us about the same thing, right? You got to be a long term investor and that's OK. We can do that. But at the same time, I think it's only fair that we hold them accountable for their long term results. But the only way we can do that is by examining their side-by-side -side track record versus their peer indexes. And so that's what we're going to do. Let's take a look at our first chart, which examines the 17-year results of U.S. stock funds, that's domestic, and then U.S. large cap funds. This goes back to 2003 up until 2020. You'll notice both of those blue lines have stayed consistently above 50%, meaning that the vast majority of professional stock pickers have failed to beat their corresponding indexes and the ETFs linked to them. And this is noteworthy because we've had both a bull and bear market cycle during this 17 year time frame. Yet during both types of market conditions, most U.S. stock funds still underperformed the indexes. The next chart looks at international, global, and emerging market stock funds versus their index peers. Here too, we see the same unappetizing trend of active stock funds in different categories consistently failing to achieve their objective, which is to outperform their peer indexes. And ultimately, that's why you're paying them the extra fees. It's to outperform. But as a group, they have not been executing. Those of you, by the way, that are telling me, well, listen, Ron, I own uh, actively managed ARK ETFs or other active funds that have massively outperformed and I'm doing great. Well, remember two things. Number one, today's hot shots are tomorrow's turkeys. And number two, nothing wrong with active funds or stock picking. But the proper and the only context for these types of strategies is within your non-core portfolio. More on that in just a second. I've got a chart to explain to you exactly what I mean. Now let's go back to U.S. stock funds for a minute and see the data from another angle. Now you're looking here at the entire universe of U.S. stock funds sliced up into these various categories. So what's the trend telling us? Do you notice the percentage of actively managed U.S. stock funds that have underperformed their peer index? Now I've highlighted the columns in yellow with the 10 year and 20 year track record to help you figure it out. And all of the numbers are very high, in most cases, well above 80%, and in extreme cases, almost 100%, which means the overwhelming majority of US stock funds that are actively managed in all categories have substantially underperformed over the long term against their peer indexes. Now, if you're still with me, don't go anywhere because I'm about to drop the number one reason why index ETFs should be the foundation of your portfolio. Now, what about bond fund managers? Well, surely they've done a better job than their stock picking counterparts. Well, unfortunately, the data doesn't look good for them either or their shareholders. The 10 year and 15 year performance numbers show that same trend as the stock pickers. In this case, the vast majority of active bond funds in all categories are underperforming their corresponding bond indexes. And you'll notice that underperformance is not a narrow victory. It's an absolute blowout. Now, you'll notice uh, toward the bottom of this, uh, this table, emerging market bond funds and loan participation bond funds are particularly bad offenders with 100% of actively managed funds in these categories underperforming 
during the past 10 and 15 years. Now, the one bond category that really jumps out at me on this, this table is the first line. That's long-term government bond funds. Here's the backdrop, folks. During the past 15 years, these types of funds have been in a massive bull market. Yet, even with the wind in their sails, almost 100% of active managers in this category of long-term government bonds has still failed to outperform the indexes. So if they can't beat the indexes during good times, should we be gullible enough to believe they can do it during bad times? Boy, I sure hope not. Now, one final thing I'm going to mention about this uh, that I think is related and very pertinent is to beware of financial advisors and money managers and anybody who tries to pervert the data we're looking at by misleading you with arguments. Here's what they try to do. They try to trick you into believing that they're able to find you that small percentage, that tiny slice of actively managed funds that can beat their indexes. And they typically show you a chart of a fund that was cherry picked, that outperformed, and that's done to prove their point. I want you to ask that advisor or that money manager if they were recommending that same fund 10 or 15 years ago and to show you the proof. See, the truth is they don't have a clue who the small percentage of winners are going to be from this point forward, and you probably shouldn't be paying them for that sort of gamble. Here's what Yoda Buffett had to say. A master stock picker, and look what he's saying about index ETFs and index funds. You'll notice he's not telling you to go out and buy the same stocks that he's buying or the same stocks that YouTubers are pumping or the same stocks that Dave Portney's tweeting about. He's telling you to invest in index funds. And Buffett's been a staunch proponent of the S&P 500 uh, index funds and index ETFs, which give you about 80% coverage to the U.S. stock market. Now, if you want 100% coverage, you can go with a total U.S. stock market ETF, something like ticker symbol S. CHB or ticker symbol VTI. Again, there's nothing wrong with investing in individual stocks or active funds, but the priority task for all, the first step, is to build your investment portfolio's foundation. That's the core. And you've got exposure to the core asset classes, stocks, bonds, commodities, real estate. You use index ETFs that are proxies for those asset classes. After you've done that, then you can add your margin of safety, which is your cushion. And then if you're going to own individual stocks or active funds, they belong in your non-core portfolio, which in culinary terms is your appetizer. The main course is your index ETFs. That's the foundation of your portfolio. And this is the three container framework for managing your investments that I teach on this channel, as well as my online classes. This is what leads to, this is what contributes to an architecturally sound portfolio that can grow and protect your money in any type of market, good, bad, and in between. The core uses, again, those index ETFs that are proxies for the major asset classes like stocks, bonds, real estate. And again, they're not trying to outperform the index. They're simply trying to match it. Now, if you're in the accumulation phase, you keep adding money to your core portfolio, after you retire and hit the deaccumulation phase, well, then you start subtracting money from your core portfolio in order to sustain your lifestyle. As you just saw in today's conversation, the data does prove that indexing wins and that indexing doesn't just win in all fund categories across multiple time frames, but it wins convincingly. It absolutely dominates other strategies. And so that leads us to the number one reason why index ETFs should be the foundation of your investment portfolio. Is it because index ETFs are less expensive? Is it because index ETFs are more diversified? Is it because index ETFs are less risky? Well, all of these are valid arguments, but they aren't the main argument. So the main and number one reason why index ETFs are supreme and should be the foundation of your portfolio is because they outperform. That's it. There is no other number one reason because that's all that matters. So if you want to easily beat Wall Street, if you want to easily beat these self-proclaimed stock picking gurus that inhabit social media platforms everywhere, including this one, the easiest and best way to do it is to simply make index ETFs your portfolio's foundation. Any further questions? Good. I didn't think so. And so that does it for today's conversation. Please check out the resources section below. I've got free ebooks. I've got online classes. I have a portfolio grading service. 
where I help you identify the strengths and weaknesses of your investment portfolio. It's available to you at PortfolioReportCard.com. So don't forget to subscribe to ETF Guide TV. Hit the like button if you enjoy our content. Thanks for watching. I'm Rhonda Leggy. We'll see you next time.